Hey everyone, I'm coming to you with a commentary video. This time it's on a Ventures Demon Hunter on a plus 10 the other side. And it's tyrannical and storming. A really, really bad fix for our comp because we're running five or oh, four melees. And uh, right off the bat, um, I'm pulling the entire room, even though it's bolstering. And my keyboard actually stopped working halfway through this pull. Um, you know, that's one of the problems of uh, having a very faulty wired connection. Uh, it's to be fixed soon anyway. Um, the big guy is raging and we have no soof. And I'm kind of confident on thanking him simply because I have cheat death. And I actually proc my cheat death there. As you guys can see from the weak auras. And the pain sub eventually came out. But this entire pool just came down to me, you know, not holding aggro. And a lot of that was just, uh, you know, not being able to press my keybinds. And I actually took, I think, a few seconds after this pull to fix my keyboard. Um, but yeah, here we are kiting the Risen Warlord. As you guys can see, he's enraged. When he's enraged, he wouldn't die. So that's why, you know, he's taking so long to just disappear. Uh, the rest of the key will go a lot smoother from here. I think I only had a single death and that was kind of my bad as well. I haven't really been playing the Avengers Demon Hunter too much. I've been playing a lot of the Brewmaster simply because it's my main. And I've been trying to gear it as much as I can for raids and progression. But over my VDH, I'm trying to do the bare minimum for the weekly chest. Over here, I'm kicking the Death Speaker, assigning kicks and my my, my uh, BK went ham there without waiting for my sigils to go off. Um, I'm playing the fiery brand build as Avengers Demon Hunter. So, you know, aggro is something that, uh, you know, my DPS have to be a bit more careful with. So again, calling kicks on the Death Speaker, that's the most important mob to kick. Um, as long as you have a kick rotation up for it, you'll be fine. I dropped Sigil of Silence here on this huge pack. There's a lot of casters in this pack. You guys can see once my uh, Demon Spikes have gone down, I'm starting to kite away from the mobs because I basically have zero mitigation at this point. I pop the Dark Moon Trinket and just simply kiting mobs around. And you guys can see like my party is rotating kicks on the Death Speaker. My Priest got blown off the platform, I believe, by the Death Speaker. And all in all, like, you know, the pull went okay. It could definitely have gone smoother if my DK didn't blow everything at the start. Um, but yes, I'm running the Fiery Brand build because my Vengeance Demon Hunter is kind of undergeared. He is something like 192 eye level, I think. While my Brewmaster is already something like 200, 203, something like that. So I've not really been working too much on my Vengeance Demon Hunter, but I do intend to keep up this tune because well, firstly, VDH are uh, really fun to play. And secondly, you know, it's it's a potential contender for the top Mythic Plus tank. Um, although there's some discussions about how, you know, Vengeance Demon Hunter might lack the defensive capabilities to survive very high-end keys. But hey, to do most of the content, they're an absolute beast in terms of the damage they put out. Um, here we drop an AMZ while we are standing in the rage of the spirit. Something interesting that you should know, and I learned from the comment sections in, in my channel, is that when he puts the mask on the floor, you guys can actually stun the mask and they will disappear. So that's a nifty trick. Uh, again, dropping my decree here. Um, as you guys can see, like the moment I drop my decrees, like it then aggro isn't an issue. So over here, um, you guys can see like, you know, we have storming as well, the fix, and it's super, super painful to deal with it because we have four melees in the party. And here I made a mistake. I made an absolute mistake. Um, I chain pulled it and a, a, a large part of it is, you know, I was actually having a conversation with them in the party and I wasn't thinking straight and I pulled uh, the mobs when the prideful spot. So that was kind of my bad. Um, so I'm just going to fast forward us running back to the spawn location. So that was the first mistake in the key I made. And I remember there was a second mistake that was avoidable. Um, this was done right after raiding, so I was a bit tired. Um, but that's not an excuse. I could have played better. So working on the Prideful here. So the way to think about Avengers Demon Hunter again is you want to make sure you always have an answer in terms of a mitigation. You either want to be in meta form, be it through your Devastation talent, or your fell, or rather just clicking on meta, or having Fiery Brand on the mob, or having Demon Spikes up. So jumping in here, um, and you guys can see that I popped Demon Spikes right off the bat, trying to grab aggro off the other guy, and... Yeah, I finally have it. I think. My warrior pop died by the sword there. Just tank a few hits. 
And once my meta goes down, you probably see me kiting. Although I think the mobs are already dead. Alright, there they are. They're dead. So I'm running the Fiery Brand build, and I think for plus 10, most people could actually run like, you know, the Spirit Bomb build completely fine. But this is the legendary that I decided to go all in on. So I'm sticking to it. The, the output is definitely lower, and AoE damage is definitely lower. But to me, at least it allows me to do more difficult content without flopping over. And I think if I actually raid it on my Avengers Demon Hunter, I can actually afford to run Spirit Bomb at this level. It's not an issue. Alright, mobs got this mobs disappeared there. And as you guys can see like on the damage meters, like Elysium Decrease still does like an insane amount of damage. And when you have like Fell Death and Elysium Decree up, it does quite a huge amount of damage. I'm just uh spreading my brand over here, as you guys can see from earlier. And dodging storming, which is you know super um, you know, problematic for our comp. <laughs> and you guys can see it being an issue later on her car as well. It's kind of problematic for us. As a Vengeance Evander, you can actually purge the spirits here, so the instant kill them. It's pretty handy. I fell death for this pool, which is great. I might not use it here, I'm not sure. Well, actually, I actually ended up using it. I'm saving my Fiery Brand for the next build. Or rather the next poll. Because it's a pack of four. And you know my mitigations are, are kinda down, so it'd be good to use my fiery brand there. As you guys can see, like on packs where Elysian Decree is up, like you know, damage is really really good. Popping the meters in this pool here. Opening the sigil of flame and putting a brand and allowing the brand to spread here. So for now I know that you know I'm super tanky and it wouldn't be an issue. Um Arguably, I could have delayed Brand because I'm going in with Fell Devastation and, you know, once my meta falls off, then I could pop, pop a Brand on those guys and kind of save a few seconds. But we are really min-maxing at this point. I died there and that was kind of my bad because, um, like I said, I could have delayed the Fiery Brand just for a few seconds. So part of playing Avengers Demon Hunter is embracing, like, moments like that <laughs> where you essentially get one shot. Uh, because of bad plays. That completely came down to me playing bad. And that was probably and that's probably like the last mistake I made in this key. From here on it's smooth sailing. You know, getting the mistakes out of my system after not playing Vengeance Diva under for a week, I guess. Um but it's not an excuse, like I really hate making excuses for myself, because if I'm not good enough then it's entirely up to me to fix the problem. So I just need to get better. We are working on a Prideful here. This route is done very specifically and you guys can see from my other The Other Side videos. The reason why we are routing it in such a specific manner, uh, you know, running to the mecha wing to clear the mobs in front of it and then running back to Haka is because we want to have Prideful buff going to Haka and you can see why on this fight. It's super, super difficult without Prideful um, and we don't really have a Bloodlust, we only have drums. So we're losing our 15% lust. Um, but this, this boss fight is really like a, a fight where it's either you kill Haka fast enough before he hits like his soft and rage or you simply fail and the reason why there's a soft and rage is because you guys see the son of Haka spawning here and again well this key is made a lot harder with four melees and storming and the necessary um, you know requirements to spread out and you guys can see we're spreading the diseases here I believe people made a mistake here yeah <laughs> and I ended up getting a disease later on now the reason why this is hard is because the ads here, they will always respawn. You'll kill them, they turn into blood, and then they respawn again. You can't kill them permanently. And they, whenever they respawn, they start pulsing Blood Nova, which really, really hurts. And at this point in time, there's a lot of damage coming out. I'm calling for a rally on uh, my warriors, my DK drop and AMZ. And you know, the blood, the blood barrier came at a really, really unfortunate timing um, because we're about to execute the, the boss and you know, He's about to die anyway, and here I think this is my the point where my warriors started to pop execute and whatnot. Um, it was super dicey, I think, and a big part of it is because we don't have like you know 
uh, a proper last comp and you know we're running four melees including myself on a storming week in a boss where you constantly need to move so you know that's one of the other reasons why it, it appeared like we're struggling there uh, we're running with one alt dps in this group so it's also not the most optimal comp but it was like one of those keys that you do just before you go to bed and it's more like a casual key so i didn't really mind this is a really bad week to push from my experience it's tyrannical and tyrannical is arguably like fine by itself but storming makes it so much worse because whenever you do mechanics you might be forced to move off the boss or the soaks or whatever you're doing just to avoid storming and later on you can see some hilarious interactions with storming during the third boss that made the boss so much harder right so we're heading into the mecha wing here and we're pulling the mob here the spider mob again you want to position it in the corner so your party can line of sight um, as Avengers Diva Hunter on a non-fortified week, you can actually tank this, put a brand on the drill, and you can simply just tank it. And you guys can see my warrior try to <laughs> sneak in a few more hits, almost died there. As you guys can see, storming is keeping us busy, you know, melee has to constantly dodge storming. It's not a fun fix, let me just put it that way. Like, I don't think any of us are enjoying storming at the moment. And except the range, the range doesn't really care because they're all the way in Africa. So I'm putting a sigil of chain to chain the um, the uh, headless clients there, so they'll leave us alone. And over here, you just want to run the debuffs out, so you wouldn't stun anyone. Um, calling kicks on the headless client here is important, making sure we kick it. All right, so my warrior kicked that. They do a very nasty debuff on the tank, so you definitely want to cut. Uh, you know kick that over here i'm marking the other mobs while we work on this dog and he's about to die right now i'm calling kicks on voice comms i'm saying okay this mob is yours and you're responsible to kick on cooldown um and immediately after this i'm probably dropping my sigils if i'm not wrong yep. are we dropping my okay storming messed me up there unfortunate I'm dropping my silent sigil there, as you guys can see. Putting a brand on these guys, just to survive the final last bit of damage, and we're okay. Arguably could have saved my brand for this guy. Just looking back on my gameplay, I could definitely be a lot smoother in my rotations and, and use of cooldowns. One very glaring error I made, I think, is uh, I'm not using Sergio of Flame often enough. Like it's it's on cooldown right now. I could be using it, and I think what well, the solution is to move Sergio of Flame upwards in terms of my Wikora tracking. Um, so that's something that I'll probably do. But yeah, you always want to keep your Sergio of Flame on cooldown, on max DPS. That's for sure. This is what happens when you're rusty at a class. Um, but again, this is not an excuse. I just need to be better. So working on this lubricator, you need to assign three kicks to this mob generally. And it does something called lubricate. After lubricate, there's self-cleaning cycle. Self-cleaning cycle is the one you need to kick because it's a heal. It's really critical. Like Elisa Decree is up now, I could have easily used Decree here. Um, but you know, maybe I was saving it for the slime pack. The one with the three mobs. And this is something that I think I need more practice on my Vengeance Demand on. Because you know, I'm not running the um, Sigil Legendary, which means that if I use my Decree there, I don't think it might have been up for the three mobs ahead. So maybe on hindsight, looking at this again. It was the right decision to kind of save it. But I could have used Sigil of Flame there, for sure. Alright, assigning kicks again. Dropping my Decree. And fell Devastation, and that's when Aggro comes back to me, doing good damage on this pull. 
putting a silent sigil and my sigil of flame down here. This has multiple mobs. And immediately we have manifestation of pride. You can see my warriors are doing really good damage here. <laughs> uh, my my priest died because I think he ran down the um, frogger mechanic. He was trying to heal us from the pipes, but he got blown off by you know the frogger mechanic. Over here, I'm just surviving with um, AMZ. I'm just telling the DK to drop AMZ to mitigate damage while the priest runs back. We kill the mob, get the pride buff, and we're off to the races here. We still have to wait for my priest, which is unfortunate. Because he's taking quite a bit of time to run back. Um, but eventually, I think he died again. Yes, you guys can see he died again. Um, I think he died to Frogger or something again. So we, so we have to waste our prideful buff. We're just waiting for him to run back. You guys can see me fast forwarding here. The moment he's in range, I'm going to pull. Right. So, yep, there you go. He's in range. We're going to pull now. Uh, see waiting on him. Alright, here I'm pulling. So, we lost our prideful buff, unfortunate. Uh, but, you know, such is life. Sometimes it happens. Something important to note is you want to soak the crystals here. Which is what I'm doing. And, again, you know, you guys can see me doing the crystals and moving away from storming. It's just really, really, really awkward. Um, no one is soaking, so... I actually had to call for some of our voice comms to run over and soak the crystals there. Again, another crystal which is being soaked, which is good. I'm trying to move at the last second, if not Storming would intercept. Or rather Storming would misplace, displace the boss and prevent the stun from going out. It's really important to stun the boss here. Whoever is being targeted with the, the markers need to form a line with the boss in order to stun the boss. Now one of the mistakes that people make on this fight is they kill Milhouse Mana Storm before Maleficent Mana Storm comes into the platform. If you kill Milhouse, the problem is you're unable to stun Maleficent Mana Storm with the Shadow Fury in the second phase. And that makes it very hard for you for the tanks to reset the debuff. Um, you guys can see this Shadow Fury stunning this boss. That allows me to drop my debuff on the um, Basso. So that's critical. The bus really hurts, especially on tyrannical weeks. You guys can see I put a brand on this guy to just try and mitigate a bit of damage. Um, and making sure, you know, all our Shadow Furies actually land is really critical. Alright, my warrior charged in. It's just to stun the boss, which is good. If you don't stun the boss here, it's a wipe. It's a lot of damage coming in from the rocket barrage. Again, calling kicks on the frost bolts, really important. We have a crystal spawning, so I'm soaking, but you know, we killed it pretty fast. Again, another Basso, I'm putting a brand on this guy just to mitigate damage. Another Basso again. Brand is still running at this point, which is perfect. Brand covered me for two different overlaps of Basso there. The third one, dropping Decree, finish it off. And there you go. That's the wing. Definitely a lot smoother after getting those errors out of my system. Um, and it's a matter of just practicing. Heading into the next wing now. Doing good on time. Even with a you know really 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 bad comp in Mythic class. Over here, I'm pulling the, the Raging Spirit down. Because I don't really want to do it on the platform. It's just very little space and it's bolstering. They definitely do not want to butt pull the mobs here. Alright, so we, there we go. Enrage Mars starts spawning, so we're moving down the stairs. Dropping a Decree here. You guys can see when a decree pops, I'm top of the damage meters. <laughs> That's how strong that ability is. Although they definitely did the right thing by nerfing its cooldown. It was pretty ridiculous on the beta servers. If those who of you who watched my channel from the beta, you will remember doing DPS-like damage overall. 
because Decree was up for every pack. Those are crazy times. We don't have a Night Fay in this party, so we can't use the urn to blow up the mobs here. Normally you would stun all the mobs with this urn. But we don't have one, so we're just assigning kicks to the Death Speaker here. Probably telling them that I want to kick the Death Speaker first. Right, you guys can see me kicking that, right? And then I'm popping Fell Death to get aggro from these, um, you know, trigger happy melee DPS. <laughs> and then I drop a Silent Sigil just to buy me a bit more time. Eruption, Erupting Darkness points the other way, which is great. And you guys can see we've been consistently kicking Moon, and that's why we have zero problems with it. Um, I then drop the brand that spreads across all the mobs to cover me for this very final bit of the pole. And there you go, mobs are dead. And we're heading into the next area. This part is just Frogger. You just need to dodge uh, the stuff that spawns. Just, just be patient here if you're not sure. Can't stress this enough. Just be patient. So you guys can see my warrior died there. <laughs> Again, doing good on time. Um, the way I like to do this next few pulls is um, I like to do triple pulls around here because the mobs are honestly not a big deal. And even though it's bolstering, I think it's still worthwhile doing so. Simply because you save so much time just if, if your party knows how to control their DPS, you save a lot of time. Um, I'm going for three pulls here. You guys can see dropping Decree. Um, you know, huge damage here from Decree. Getting very firm aggro. And I called for a pain sub right from the start because I didn't want to spend any of my cooldowns. And now that meta has fallen off, I'm starting to put a brand on these guys, I believe. Oh no, I opted for Sigils of Chain, chain them back. Oh, it's perfectly fine. Now they're going down. So you save a lot of time just doing triple pulls like that, even though it's bolstering. And I know one of the comments in my section on my plus 13, uh, the other side that I timed was, would you do this triple pull on a bolstering week? And as you guys can see, the answer is yes. You definitely need, um, you know, very disciplined DPS to kind of do it though. I'm pulling it into the third pull here, and I pulled them the last because I believe the 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 bug binders have the least amount of health in this three pack. So again, I'm gonna kite here. I think I I didn't proc my cheat death, which is good. Drop a silence sigil here, just to stop the bug binders from casting a little. Another elicent decree to blow them up. Putting out some damage, I felt devastation here, which was cancelled by the silence. Unfortunate. But I got into meta form, I think that's the more important thing. Meta form is about to drop, but my uh, demon spikes are up. So the moment meta dropped, I popped demon spikes and I tagged a few hits. So that's critical. Like if I didn't have demon spikes, I'll get one shot. Um Again, the life of a demon the being Thanos snapped out of you know mythic dungeons is commonplace. And part and parcel of playing the Avengers Diva Hunter. Yeah, we're working on the final ones. They have Fiery Brand on them, both of them, so I'm not too afraid of them. Even though they have like 5 stacks of bolster and they swing really hard. Um, over here, I'm working on the Pride. And... In my mind, I'm setting up for the next few pulls, which is like... Uh, normally, I will pull 4 packs there. And we'll AoE them down with the Urn. But as you guys can see from the plus 13, the other side that I timed, um, that strategy worked really well when we pulled four packs. But the issue is, is bolstering, number one. Number two, in this pack, uh, rather in this comp, I don't have a Night Fae to use the urn. Getting a bit of FPS lag here. Um, I apologize for that. Um, it's got to do with my settings on, on the uh, recording. Which will be fixed. For sure. Alright, so you guys can see me going for a double pull here. Uh, we did bolster some mobs. And storming makes it really difficult. It's really, it's honestly very annoying. You guys can see my melee losing uptime on the packs because they're just running around trying to dodge. Um, you know, storming. And here I'm going for another double pull. I'm putting a brand on these guys. Hard, 
Um, again, like, you know, Brent is covering me uh, when they're all 3 stack both set, which is great. I'm taking 40% less damage from each and every one of them that has a Brent on them. And as long as I'm so cleaving, like, you know, I'll get Brent up relatively quickly. Okay, so for this next pull, um, traditionally how I like to do it is I'll pull the mobs to the left and I wouldn't pull the Matriarch in. You do not want to pull the Matriarch in because the Matriarch does something called an Enrage on nearby mobs. So on a bolstering week, when you have bolstered and Enraged mobs hitting you, uh, it's probably one shot. So I'm just playing it relatively safe. You guys can see me kiting a little here. Alright, then I'm popping Demon Spikes and running into tank. So that's how I'm playing it. Alright, then now you see me going for the Matriarch pull, finally. And there was half a mind of me whether I should double pull the next few mobs. I decided against it. I wanted to Infernal Strike out of that, but... <laughs> Storming made a mess out of it. Alright, here you go. You see the Enrager, Angering Shriek. This is when there's a lot of damage coming out. You see the two mobs being enraged. We have no Soof. I have a brand running on them, so I wasn't too afraid. Therefore, I was face tanking them. And they're all going down here. Again, I apologize for the FPS lag. I think I was rendering something while I was doing this recording. I'm pulling the stealthy out here, so we have a triple pack to work on. Um, and I called for paint sub from the Discipline Priest. You guys can see this the paint sub Wikora on my bars here. Alright, once they're going down, I'm dropping brand, I believe. Um or right, I'm just kiting apparently. See how my cheat death up. I'll be dropping my brand here. So I drop my brand here. Going to fell death. This one huge elder stack horn. And my brand up and running, so I'm not too afraid. Um that's a knockback, which is good. I believe it was shining force from the priest actually. So we want to have the manifestation of pride buff going into dealer ZXA because well again we are running four melees and on a storming and on a week uh where you know it's tyrannical it's gonna be rough because with four melees you will spawn four traps very close to one another and you need to be very sure not to take one another's trap or else it's probably a wipe um, and you guys can see how difficult it is because the melees need to have discipline to spread out so we spawn the traps in a distinct fashion. My my warrior accidentally took one of the traps by mistake, which is You know. Unfortunate. He lost a bit of uptime on his bomb limp. I think he took the bomb too early here. He came down and exploded the bomb on us. Unfortunate. So we took unnecessary damage here. My this priest is playing catch up now. So we're a bit behind on heals. Um And we only have three traps for this explosive contrivance. So we definitely messed up like you know, mechanics here, you guys can see my warrior dying there because, you know, someone took his trap earlier. I popped meta here to avoid proccing my cheat death. Yeah, so there's already two mistakes to into this key. Um, and we can't afford more mistakes here, else we probably die. So my warrior is going out with the bomb. This please drop a barrier to mitigate damage. Storming is chasing us again. <laughs> Storming is just so bad on this boss. You have so much melee. Here we go, another explosive contrivance. I'm going out in the last second. And again, going up and getting knocked by the storming, not fun. Um, although I did avoid to take damage there. Because I was in the air. Entering execute phase, we didn't have a B res up on my DK. So at this point in time, it's just important that you know we spam executes, try and kill the boss. I'm calling for health pots at this point. And I think it's probably going down here. Yep, it's going down here. So, moral of the story here is um, if you're running a melee heavy comp like what we're doing, 
Make sure to spread for the traps. Right, we're attacking the boss spread. So you spawn the traps in distinct locations and then you can take the own traps that you spawn when explosive contrivance goes out. Don't take it too early. If you take it too early, you know, you end up getting damaged. Um, also, if you have the bomb, don't go out too early. Don't step on the traps too early because uh, you definitely want to wait until your bomb is about to explode before you go up in the air. It's really important. So over here we have 6 minutes on Muzala and that's what it's sufficient time to time the key. And here on voice comms again, I'm just assigning positions. Top right is me and the healer and top left is basically you know, the more immobile DK. And then we have the two warriors taking the back left and the back right. This boss trucks on Tyrannical and I know a lot of people in the comment sections have asked me like, how do you even tank this on Tyrannical? Well, the answer is um, you definitely want to cycle your defensives for every Soul Crusher. It does crazy amounts of damage. Um, so on the first Soul Crusher here, I believe I pop meta here uh, to fell devastation. So I meta running for this, uh, you know, Soul Crusher here, which is all right. Master of Reality, Master of Death, sorry. Both my warriors can stay in and spell reflect the uh, melee swing at the front of the platform. Or the rest of us simply dodge. Now the next Soul Crusher came in, I put a Fiery Brand to mitigate damage. And I think on the next one, I'm popping meta. Alright, so the Soul Crusher is out. I'm telling the this priest to heal me a little here. A lot of damage incoming. Again, a frontal hit. I think you see my warriors standing in and spell reflecting. Yep, they spell reflected the hit there. And moving right and then moving left as the safe zones. There's one very final Soul Crusher that uh, my warrior almost died there, unfortunate. I popped a meta here at this point, just to survive the hit. You guys can see the debuff still ticking on me, but meta is basically making, um, you know, uh, an, e an easy time out of it. Over here, we need to burn this thing as a, a tank and a healer. As a Vengeance Demon Hunter, your melee DPS, like single target DPS is not like the strongest. You're really good at AoE, but melee DPS is you know, not the best. I think I probably... Um, I killed it in time, but barely in the nick of time. My my Discipline Priest is also putting in damage into this guy. It's really important. The five seconds to burn it, and there we go. We made it in time. And everyone made it in time, actually. By the way, a big thank you for those who contributed uh, on my Plus 13 The Other Side Time video that I posted on this uh, channel. Uh, there's a lot of people who basically explain like how to very quickly determine, you know, if you second phase it, which totem corresponds to which portal. That was super helpful. It came in very clutch for a lot of my runs, so thank you for pointing that out. That's very helpful. Working on Muzala here. And when you're trying to one phase him, just note that you actually need to kill uh, Muzala, or you need to bring Muzala down to 10% in order for him to die. Um, getting out the melee swing over here. All right, and then dodging left again. And Muzala should die here. I probably am going to meta form just because this soul crush is going to hurt me really badly. Um, and he's about to fall here. There you go. Um, and that's the key. So all in all, I hope like, you know, you guys enjoyed the key. There was definitely a lot of mistakes made um, early on in the key and I could have played better, I reckon. And a lot of that comes down to rustiness, not playing it for a week. I'm running a fiery brand build, so a bit more defensive, but I definitely want to fix the problem of not using Sergio of flames enough on cooldown. It's one of the biggest mistakes I've noticed looking at the gameplay here. But anyway, those are things that I'll work on. Hope that was useful. If it was, do subscribe to the channel. I publish daily Shadowlands content on this channel. And if you like my Avengers Demander Week Auras and user interface, you can download it in the description below. Thank you so very much for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.